Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Make My Food Awesome. I'm Mark Allen France, your guide to good food. And I'm Trisha Morrissey. My sweetheart of science. Well, today's episode is going to be exciting. Um, we, it is. It is. We've talked about, and we, we hinted towards um, showing you ways to preserve the things that you grow from your garden. If you're not going to eat them fresh, there's a way to go ahead and preserve them for future use. Is that why these are here? Yes, these are from the garden, Ooh. which I'm really excited because our cucumbers didn't do well last year, but they are doing mm -hmm. really well this year. So this is our first harvest of our cucumbers from the garden. Got some big ones, got some medium ones, got some cute little ones, little, little, little baby one. Yes, but that those are like my favorite when, I, when we do pickles. So I guess we're going to be canning them. Yes, we're going to be canning. Okay. And the recipe that we share with you today is uh, a recipe for kosher pickles. And you, uh, the way that we're going to preserve them today, you'll be able to store them for at least a year mm -hmm. on the shelf. There's other ways where you can do fresh packed mm -hmm. or you can put them in the refrigerator for up to three weeks. But I wanted to show you a way to preserve them for a whole season mm -hmm. so um, you can spread out your bounty a bit. Now, if you guys are new here, and you're just joining us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we, we're doing other episodes of canning also, but pop down, hit that subscribe button really quick. Subscribe to us, share with your friends, hit the little bell and you can get all of our notifications, which mm -hmm. will be good, good. And then you can come back and see more of our stuff. So we have all these things here yes. and you're walking me through this. Right. I do want to share a couple of health um, oh, benefits yes. of cucumbers before we get into the process. Uh, cucumbers are full of antioxidants, which we've talked about before, and they also have anti-inflammatory properties. And the vitamins that you can find in them are vitamin K, vitamin B, and vitamin C. And they have a lot of water. So that's always good. The more, <laughs> Lots of water. Well, we've been talking about my plate. And mm -hmm. so foods that have high water contents uh, that are whole fruits and vegetables, obviously, are the most healthy because... They're full of stuff that your body can use to mm -hmm. function properly. So, without further ado, let's uh, get canning these cucumbers and turn them into magical kosher pickles. Okay, well, just so you know, honey, I'm going to try it again today. I'm going to try using this for some of the shots when we go turn back around. Okay. So, I think I've got a handle on it, um, but uh, we'll go ahead and see. So, okay. Tell me what do we well, need to do? Well, the first thing that we need to do, because you, you want to be efficient when you're doing this, because um, it's important that you, when you sterilize your equipment, you don't wait too long to pack them. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the pan today. I'm going to put together our pickling solution. Mm -hmm. And as I'm doing that, I want to get it on the stu stove as soon as possible. And while you prep and prepare these, uh, the larger cucumbers are going to have to be halved, um, quartered, whatever. The small ones just remove the stems. Gotcha. So as you're doing that, um, I'll get the, the brine prepared. Do you also, want me to put these in a bowl? Can I put them in a bowl just to set them aside? Is that all right? Um, actually, you won't need to do that. Oh, so we'll just cut them Once we cut them and I sanitize our jars, we're going to pack the jars. Okay. So, so it's a pretty fast process. Now, what's going on back here? Back here, um, in my largest pan, I am bringing water to a boil because this is going to be where I process our quartz of pickles. Um, so we can seal them for storage. In this pan, this is a larger or medium-sized pan, which I'm going to be sanitizing our pre-washed jars, and I want to make them sanitary and warm. And then on my back burner, I have my lids in boiling water because I would like, you know, everything is important that it's sterilized and so it will uh, seal properly and be safe for consumption. So that's kind of um, how our setup is going to be today. And these are the jars we're going to be using. Yep. Now, the recipe that I'm going to share with you today covers two quarts. Sometimes you might have overflow of more pickles because you're kind of eyeballing like the recipe is about 14 medium pickles. We have 20 pickles all together and they're various sizes. So I'm kind gotcha. of eyeballing that. Very, very cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make my brine. Okay. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take two cups of water. Okay. Put that into our pan. We're going to have one cup of white distilled vinegar, add that mm -hmm. to the pan. And then I bought Ball has kosher dill pickle mix. 
So this is a mix that has everything in it. It has your salt, your seasonings, and um, the ingredients that help with crisp crispness of your pickles, which is usually aloe. Say that word three times. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to take my ladle. I'm going to mix it around a little bit, and then I'm going to get it onto heat. I want to bring this to a boil. Okay. What do you want me to do right now? I'd like you to go ahead and cut Start up our cucumbers. Start cutting the cucumbers up. Okay. Yes. Beautiful. And you just want them in spears, correct? Yes. And the little ones just remove the pickly stems and we ought to be good. All righty then. So I know I love a good dill pickle. And uh, yeah. growing up, my dad used to can tons of them and he'd put little surprises in there for us sometimes. What do you mean surprises? He would. Sometimes he would put in some hot peppers, throw a jalapeno in, grab a hot chili, throw a hot chili in. Okay. So we, we, we had a lot of little okay. little surprises. And maybe that's why I like hot stuff so much is because growing up, you know, my dad <laughs> snuck it in for us. So Well, I have to say... And I think our audience probably knows me pretty well by now that I don't like super hot things. I mean, if like if, if you're going to put... Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I don't like super spicy things, I should say that. So anyways, um, while he is preparing these, I'm going to go ahead and sterilize our jars in the back. I'm going to put each quart jar inside the water for a minute, rotating it, make sure all the inside walls, including the rim, are sanitized with... Um, the hot water and those will be removed and then we're going to make sure that we wash our hands and we're going to pack the jars the warm jars are going to get packed mm -hmm. with our pickles um we want to make sure that you don't really leave any empty airspace because you can you'd be surprised how many pickles you can fit in one quart jar so i'm going to go ahead and sanitize those as he's chopping them do you want this like this guy chopped in hand yeah these two and then the rest probably um don't have to be Yes. Because they're kind of little. And they're cute. And gherkins are my favorite style or size of pickled cucumbers. So when did you get when did you have your first dill pickle that you remember? My mom has been canning most well actually most of her life. And so you were born with one in your mouth? <laughs> pretty much. Um, my mom would tell stories. She used to do sweet pickled beets and when my brother and I were small and just starting table food and things like that. She would chop up those pickled beets for us and we used to eat them like crazy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she, like I said, I remember at my house growing up, the basement, a whole wall was dedicated four shelves high of just preserved stuff that my mom would make. So I think we have plenty of room here, honey. Okay. So that we can put the jars. And so I'm bringing you the first hot jar. Okay. You want to put it right... You want to wash your hands, possibly. Yes, possibly. And, well, yes, please do so. So be careful the jar is hot. Um, like I said, you want to pack it vertically and mm -hmm. every little space and crevice that you can get. Pick a cucumber in there. You do it. Now, for the longest time, when my kids were really little, they didn't understand that a pickle was actually a cucumber. And they didn't believe me, so... When okay. they saw me canning, they were astounded. All hands washed. Okay, so, just so I sterilize, you pack. Okay. And then um, we will cover them while we wait for the brine to come up to boil. It's it's getting there. Do you Now, do you want me to do a mixture of the babies in one and the big guys in the other? Make it as pretty as you want. Ooh, some creative uh, we know freedom he, here. He likes to be creative and... Make things beautiful. As he says, you eat with your eyes first. Yes, maybe. Nothing is prettier than a nice preserved jar. You know what would be stuff. really pretty in here, honey? What? A red hot chili. Not on this batch. I know that you're tempted, but I don't really think that's well, what I'm going I'm, to do today. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to have... Well, I'm enough, doing all three courses. Enough to do three. Because I have a feeling we might need to. Yes, I, I have that same so exact So I'm going to take my regular size lid. I'm going to pop the third lid into the pan of boiling water. First one's done. Okay. Can I just set it off here? 
set it off to the side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a clean linen and um, I'm going to cover it. I want to keep things from going, things that are airborne mm -hmm. from going into it. Can I tell things you like something? Dust or in pet hair or whatever. I have to be honest with you. This jar is really hot. <laughs> it's supposed to be. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think my, my little fingers are... Your, okay, little fingers okay. are going to be fine. All right, I'll just do it this way because now, now that I have Now, if you do going, have to slice some of these in smaller chunks to get them in, then you go for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm beautifying your pickles. Okay. So, yeah, these look good. Now, I love my pickles. I like having them on... Um, on my sandwiches sure, and sure. you know what this these would be great on what when we do another episode with carrot dogs mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great for a chicago style dog well, like you've been talking about yeah i can't wait to do that now um when you preserve these they have a shelf life of one year but you want to wait at least four to six weeks before opening them because you want the brine to work into all the, the places of each of the cucumbers so they're fully pickled. Mm -hmm. And that will give you the best flavor. Yes. If you can't wait and you open it earlier, um, the, the cucumbers probably aren't gonna be fully absorbing. I mean, they'll absorb the brine, but mm -hmm. the longer you let it sit, the more enhanced the flavor becomes. Kind of like a nice bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting these all put down in here. All right, our brine has come to a boil. Nice, nice. And we can keep these, once you have that packed, mm -hmm. we can um, bring everything here front and center so okay. I can show you the process of keeping it sterile. Can I see the knife real I'm quick? Sorry. I'm just gonna get, these guys, you know what? We have enough there, what we can do it later on. Do we can do a little, a little jar. Pint. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, we could do that. That will work, because I don't want to waste anything. No, no, any, no, no. And if it doesn't get put in a jar, it gets put in our belly on a salad. Okay, so this, actually we can do that good? right after. Yes. Okay. So what I want you to do is we're going to place all three of these here, hot jars. Okay. And it's important that they're hot. They are, they are hot. Definitely hot. Okay, so I'm going to bring over... It's warm in here. Not going to okay. lie. This pan has our lids in it. Mm-hmm. And this pan has our brine. That steamy brain. Now, a couple tools that you're gonna want. Can you wet that just with just a little bit of water? Just make the end um, damp. I want it damp, okay. not dripping. Okay, and you can, what you're about to see are things you can buy, whoops, in a canning kit at the store that's by, that sells canning supplies. All right, so you're gonna take, um, this is like your, your funnel that fits the jar, which is really fanciful. And I'm just going to ladle my uh, solution in. And you want to make sure you, you leave at least a half inch of head space or air space at the top of your cork. Because you don't want it to, when you process it, you don't want it to boil up and over. You don't want too much... Um, too much brine in there? Yeah, you don't want you don't want the pressure to build too much. Gotcha. Go okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take I don't even know the name of this the technical name of this. I'm gonna call a it a deep bubbler. A a dip de doo. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, hold your jar and you're gonna push down on the sides and you're just gonna make sure that your cucumbers are in there and any air bubbles that were trapped in between the pieces of cucumbers on the way up through the liquid you want to push down and expel that air because that extra air um, could cause it not to seal well. So I need this. So what you're going to do is you're now going to just make sure a damp, clean washcloth that you make sure the rim or top of the jar is free of anything. Any of the solution, salt, or spices because it will not seal properly. So you're going to take your little magnetic holder, remove your lid, and your rings were washed ahead of time. You're going to place it on the top and you're going to Tighten it so you can't turn it anymore. You want it to be a nice tight seal. So now we're going to go to our next jar. 
Very nice. Here, I'll hold this for you. That would be great, thank you. All right. Yes, and it's, it's yeah, I was going to say, my, be careful if you're wearing glasses when you're leaning over this because you'll get steamed up really, really quickly. But it, it smells so good. You can smell that dill, and it, it's just nice and nice and Vinegar, powerful. the dill, the garlic. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, have you ever taken pieces of garlic and just put pieces of garlic in there? Yeah, there's a lot of different kinds of pickling recipes. This one doesn't call for that because mm -hmm. everything is kind of prepared in the kosher dill pickle mix gotcha. that I bought by ball, ball. But if you are going to make your own, mm -hmm. then you can do that. Very nice. All right. So I hate to say, I think I'm going to have to make more brine. I mean, well, that's that's fine. We, we got the two here. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and then I'll make a half a recipe for that batch mm -hmm. so I can finish out my third quart because you never know when you're going to run into a third. All nice. right. So if you um, could help me out, we're going to do okay. for our brine is we're going to need an eighth of a cup of the pickling mix. Okay, a one eighth cup pickling mix. And we're gonna so you guys do, are seeing this. <laughs> we're once gonna again. do a half a cup of vinegar. Putting it in. There we go. Eighth a cup. Pouring it in. Okay. And you can get these at almost any store this time of season. Um, it's just your simple ball kosher dill pickle mix. Um, I know that. Uh, Trisha and I have made other ones where... And one cup of water. One cup Put of that water. on the stove, heat it up. Gotcha. We have made them before where we, we, we actually grow dill in the garden. Yes. And we will go out and get pieces of dill and stick them in there. And I know that that's... My dad will... I've never seen him use any type of store-bought mix. Well, they have a lot more on the that's, market now than I they know. did... <laughs> But even my dad, even ago. even with it on the market, my dad is yep. all about making it, you know, from scratch at home. But that's that's the nice thing about having these little things that you can pick up in the store um, makes makes canning a lot easier. It does. They they help you do shortcuts. So my uh, pot on the back here is brought to boil. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our other device. Uh, the handle's rubberized in the bottoms here, and this is what helps you to grab onto your jars. I do it the other way. And transport them. It's actually it's supposed to be... Well, you can do it either way. No, wait. It's tricky. <laughs> what we're going to do, <laughs> when this quart is ready, we're going to place all three of these into the hot water bath. Mm -hmm. And um, you want your water to boil. As you lower your, your jars into the water, you want the water level to cover the top of the lids about a half inch mm -hmm. and you let that water uh, stay to a boil for about 15 minutes to process them and then you remove them using the, the same device and let it cool and as soon as your tap seals and the jar is completely cool then you can label it and then put it where you're going to store it in a nice dark cool place yes. and they'll, they'll keep for a year it's very good so while we wait for this to boil to put into the rest of the brine into this one you know we're, we'll just we'll pop ahead a couple couple minutes and, and we'll have the brine inside here and we'll be putting the jars in there. So we'll be back in yep. just one second, guys. We'll see you soon. It's time to take them out of our canner. I'm excited. Me too. Oh, so you notice that I tilt the jar before I totally remove it from the canister because why am I? 
Well, she does it so that she can drain off the water off the top and she's placing it onto this rack so that it actually gets cool air all around the entire jar. Why do I want to cool them quicker, Mark? Tell our audience. I don't know. I figured you could. <laughs> we want to cool them quicker, one, to speed up the process, but two, for them to seal. Yes. And when you seal, as you're setting wherever, doing whatever, you'll hear a... And the funny thing is, is at my parents, whenever my dad is canning and Dakota is there, and he hears one of those clicks, he starts barking. Well, Milo doesn't like the clicks at all, and he runs and hides, and I haven't figured out why that sound bothers him so much, other than maybe it hurts his ears, I don't know. So here they are once they're cool, and the seal, uh, the lids is sealed, then it'll be safe to write on the top of them what, what it is for storage. No, no. ever want to try to do it beforehand. No, and we're not going to open one up right now and taste one, because I'm sure everyone knows what pickles taste like. But um, trust me, we've done, we do these every, every year, mm -hmm. and they taste delicious. They're very, very good. But, um, you know, if you're new here and you guys want to see more um, canning episodes or you want to see anything else, let us know what you want to see. Because I know that we've got a lot of stuff coming up that we're going to be canning, and, and we're going to be doing jam. And what else do you have? Well, we're going to do... Uh episode on beans mm -hmm. we're probably going to do an episode on peppers how to make crunchy uh, jalapeno or um, yellow peppers and let me see there was something else potatoes potatoes and green beans oh, and I, they're I not it. just standard um, recipes they're new recipes mm -hmm. um, that actually flavor your vegetables that you can so. and and don't be deterred if you don't have cucumbers growing in your garden you can go to the store and buy some and make them at home um, and it's it's great to have i know that we've got a huge area downstairs that's set up for all of our canning and everything and my dad you go into into the utility room at my parents house he's got i mean <laughs> stuff shoved in every corner and crevice that you can think of and what, what's funny about his dad he has a cabinet that he locks which is his premier jams and jellies that he doesn't want this one coming in and raiding so th Never. that's pretty funny because when I first found that out I laughed and I said what do you have a thief here and he's like yeah and I'm like who and he's like who do you think it's, and I'm like I, this one yeah I wasn't stealing I was borrowing mm -hmm. what we're gonna give it back as a smile Anyway, <laughs> only the most special people get things out of a lock cabinet. Yeah. So <laughs> if you guys are here for the first time, like we said, hit that subscribe button, click on the bell and get all of our notifications and come back and join us once again on Make, Make My, My Food, Food awesome. awesome. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Bye. Take care. Bye.